All right, everybody. So I said we would have something special for you guys to add on to the podcast. And I kind of tried to avoid talking about it because I wanted it to kind of be something that you guys can just be like, oh, this came out of nowhere. And now you guys will see a push for it. So as you guys know, we've discussed the whole recasting Black Panther thing here multiple times. We've had fans in our comments and we actually had people reach out to us. And one person that reached out to us, I was like, well, this makes sense if we get him on the show because kind of at the forefront of it really so instead of me continuing to blab on i'm just gonna let you introduce yourself thank you so much yeah i'm i'm emmanuel noisette or e-man from e-man's movie reviews and yes i'm the one that started this whole commotion uh with uh recast t'challa i created the um the recast t'challa petition on change.org uh the hashtag and all that so Every single time you see it out there, you can blame me. It's it's totally fine. <laughs> you know, uh, I actually kind of uh, thought that that was funny because you're like, oh, I created that. And I was like, you know, I've seen you out there. And then I had a couple of my fans being like, Armin, this is kind of funny because like eight years ago, I started the hashtag save Constantine thing. So ah. I was like, this is really fitting that we both, you know, were so dedicated to push something here. Obviously, That's yours, dope. I think, is more important here because, you know, Constantine, whatever, that was a canceled show. This is something more... I would say culturally appropriate, sure. if that makes sense. Sure. So, uh, you know, uh, before we get into this, I do want to kind of find a basis with you by mm -hmm. asking three questions, which I always ask new people that join the show to kind of chat it up with me. Uh, mm -hmm. First and foremost, favorite superhero of all time? Black Panther. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to assume, but you never know, right, right, you know, right. like, so that that's good. Uh, favorite film of all time? Ooh. You know what? I I'll go with the easier one. The first Matrix. I'll go with that. Love it. That's, yep. I actually showed my daughter that for the first time about a year ago. Nice. She was like, oh, wow. Like, I could see her brain transforming like mine did when I first saw it. You know, it's yes. one of those things. Yep. Um, and then I guess a uh, favorite comic book movie of all time. Ooh. Uh... Oh, man, that's tough. Because there's so many good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? For the sake of the show, I'm gonna say Black Panther. Okay, just for the sake of the show. That, but I got plenty others. Yeah, so yeah, I'll yeah. For today, we'll go with Black Panther. <laughs> that, that's that's honestly good. That's good. Um, so with that out of the way, now people kind of got a basis of what you know, uh, you know, kind of you like and all that. So I'd like you to tell everybody because I've seen some people kind of react to this whole recasting T'Challa thing negatively why you kind of believe that this would be a good thing and what you're kind of trying to push for. If you could kind of explain to people why you see it this way, because there's always, you know, tons of confusion when it comes to something like this. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I mean, listen, you know, let me just say that, you know, the the whole recast the child thing would have never started. It never would have even been a thing had Marvel not been so final with their decision, right? When they came out, during that Disney investor meeting and said, we will not recast the character of T'Challa. That right there, like they didn't say we won't do it for now. They didn't put yeah. any conditions on there to at least leave the window open, right? Mm -hmm. To leave the door open. And it was at that point that I was like, oh my gosh, like you guys really just jumped to that. Like Chadwick just passed. Yeah. Like it was August. Nobody was rushing you to make any final decision. You could have waited, and I think everyone would have perfectly understood, this is tough for you guys, it's emotional, we understand, if you want to delay the movie, I think everybody would have understood it. But then, you know, when they said that they were going to just not recast, I was like, so what does that mean? You know, because, you know, I, look, I nerd out on these things. I mm -hmm. read all the, the stupid nerdy stuff yeah. on Marvel, like, you know, even the the, the uh, canon books, oh, the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I have an understanding of how they talk, how they operate. So it's, for me, I'm like, wait a minute, if you're not going to recast the character of T'Challa, then that means you're either going to do like Paul Walker in the uh, Fast and Furious and just, you know, make him live in the background, but I'm yeah. like, he's too big of a character to just do that with, or you might actually kill him off. You might actually get rid of him permanently. And I'm like, my goodness, you can't do that. Like, this character's story just began. We don't know anything about what this character is going to be. We don't mm -hmm. know, like, what he's going to be as a king. We don't know what he'll be as a warrior, as a politician, as a fighter, as a husband, as a yeah. father. We don't know anything. 
And I'm like, to cut it off so short, it was it was it was unsettling, right? Yeah. So that's when I did like this huge deep dive into Chadwick Boseman. Like I I just because he was one of my favorite actors. Like, you know, as I, so I'm a film critic. As a film critic, as and as of uh, one of my favorite actors, I got a chance to interview him, and I thought I could retire. I thought that was it. Like right. I made it. You know, like I met my hero. Yeah. This guy is awesome. Um, and he's gonna play one of my favorite superheroes. It was like a dream come true. Um, so of course, you know, when he passed away, it hit me personally and professionally. Um, but yeah, I did like this huge deep dive and I was just, you know, looking at all of his interviews, I was reading every single article from like his friends, his family, like everything that people were talking about him and everything he said when it comes to, um, acting and the roles that he took on. And I came across this one video and it was with journalist Roland Martin. And he had text messages with Chadwick Boseman. And this was right before when Chadwick was losing weight and, you know, people were like really concerned about his health. And he told Roland Martin, like, hey, I want people to see the role and not me. That is the job of an actor. It's about what you do with the role. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point that I was like, you know what? I think given all this information I've seen, everything he's talked about, how he viewed the roles he took on were bigger than him. And he's taken big roles. Jackie Robinson, James yeah. Brown, Thurgood Marshall. This guy was not an egotistical guy that would believe nobody else could play these roles except for him. He's He was like, I mean, Denzel Washington paid for him to go to school. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So like he was really a believer in appreciating import, important roles and helping other actors out like he was very very conscious about mm -hmm. that so when i'm putting all these things together i'm like you know what i totally understand marvel's position here i know that they're they're close with him i know that they worked with him but at the same time i don't think they really knew how he felt about this role and that's one of the reasons why i don't go out of my way attacking marvel like yeah. at all because i'm like they're human you yeah. know like and they're fully capable of having emotional, you know, emotions. And personally, I think they kind of rushed it. Yeah. But that's why I'm not saying that, like, man, you guys are bad or evil or whatever. I'm just like, hey, you know what? If we really want to honor Chadwick Boseman, if we really, if that's the goal, then I do think we should recast. And to your earlier question, the reason why I think recasting is so important is because when you look at Hollywood, when you look at entertainment, Recasting is exactly the reason why mm -hmm. we have popular characters today. Characters don't get popular and they don't stay relevant if they don't get recast. Yep. When was the last time, and I'll ask you this, when was the last time you did a show about the $6 million man? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, yeah. When, when have you done a show, yeah. I don't know, about Mantis? And I'm not talking about the Mantis from right. Avengers or yep. Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm talking about the one by Carl Lumley. You know, like... Meteor Man, even. Yeah. We haven't had those conversations because those characters have been forgotten. Yeah. You know, now we remember them because we're older. You know? Right. Yeah. But yeah. Like anyone under 30 is going to have to Google who's the $6 million man? Mm -hmm. Who was the actor, Lee Majors? You know, who are these people? Right. Because they've never been recast. And I'm like, yo, I don't want that to happen to Chadwick. And I definitely don't want that to happen to T'Challa yep. because I'm like, recasting is why we remember Christopher Reeve to this day, even though we got Henry Cavill. It's yeah. why we remember Sean Connery to this day, even though we have Daniel Craig. And I know some people are like, well, there's going to be competition. And I'm like, so? It's yeah. okay to have multiple favorites. And That's a luxury, you know, right? You yeah, go ahead. That up, and that's the same thing I was going to say. Like the first thing that jumps to my mind is the uh, the 007 thing. And before yeah. I got onto the show, I was like, you know, I'm going to look at some old interviews and kind of try to perceive this in a different angle. Because my angle at this whole thing's been like, look, I'm too stupid to comment about this because I'm a nerd white guy whose favorite superhero mm -hmm. is Captain America. Well, I, you know, I've been treated good and now even better because I love Sam. So like, yeah, I can't wait to see how Marvel is going to try to word this because I know there's going to be a lot of people like you who are going to be more. Because there's the everyday people that don't mm -hmm. know that Black Panther's not being recast because they're just yeah. the average movie viewer. Right. And you brought up something about, you know, the whole, um, like, the toxic side of it because you're not attacking mm -hmm. Marvel. And that's right. the one thing. I want to look at 
as I did with like the Snyder's thing and the Spider-Man blowback, I'm like, mm-hmm. how is this whole movement that you're doing, recast the child, been received? And yeah. this might be the first actual thing I've seen supported by people like you running it, mm-hmm. where there's no toxicity behind it. It's the love for the thing and yeah. putting people's feelings and emotions first in front of everything else, which I want to congratulate you on that because Thank you. you haven't cultivated a toxic environment, which is stunning to say the least in the comic book community you know especially the way some of them go and to me i was looking at like what you were sharing in some of the you know interviews you've done and things you said and outlets you've been on and i I kind of see what you're saying there is like it is the thing of if suddenly you know you had black panther and so many Mm -hmm. kids you know one of my daughter's best friends yeah black teenager and to him black panther was like Oh my God, you know, it was, yeah, it it was that moment. I saw it in his eyes. Like he had that moment, like I had with Captain America. So it it was kind of, uh, I took it back for a second. I sat there. I was like, my God, he's not going to have that for the sequel. And years from now, his son isn't going to have that because T'Challa is not it. And again, sure. They can get a new actor in the suit, but it's not T'Challa. And it's not T'Challa. From that point, I saw what you were saying and I was like, I think I get it now. And again, I get, I get it from the outside. So sure. it's, yeah, it is one of those things where I'm kind of seeing what you're saying here and I'm seeing mm-hmm. a lot of support, you know, you're gaining a lot of traction. There's obviously still the people that say, no, just recast them. Sure. Or don't, you know, or Hey, just you cast somebody else or, you know, put yeah. somebody else in the suit, which ultimately I think is what it seems like the leaks are hinting at, which again, it, it kind of, I feel weird talking about it, you know, because he did mm-hmm. just pass it relatively. Yeah. It's so recent. And like you said, yeah. they came out like not even that far behind. They're like, this is our new goal. And I was like, I remember us talking about it on the podcast going, this is a little weird. I don't know how to react to this. And, uh, you know, you're I react- felt the same way. Yeah. I felt the, like, I was like, why are we talking about this right now? Like, I wasn't, I was still grieving. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never cried over celebrities, but I cried over Chadwick. You know, like that was, that was really moving to me, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm, and I'm, uh, thank you so much for bringing up the fact that, you know, we really want this message, this movement, this campaign to remain positive because I've looked at, you know, again, me and you, we've been doing this, you know, YouTube thing for a while. Yeah. And like, I seen the, the evolution of the Snyder cut. I've seen the good Mm -hmm. and I've seen the bad. Um, And I've also looked at other movements, whether it's Black Lives Matter, Defund the Police, whatever. And one thing that I noticed was like, one, negativity does not work. Like whenever you're negative about anything, people start to focus on your negativity and not what you're saying. So I'm like, I'm not going to give them that. Right. And two, I also know that people will try to change your narrative for you. Um, It's one of the reasons why I'm so protective and I get so defensive whenever people slightly try to misconstrue it because I put a lot of care and effort into wording exactly what I wanted in the petition. Mm -hmm. I said from the very beginning, this does not have to be an immediate recast. Why did I say that? Because I want to give people time to grieve. I want to make sure that no one feels pressured on either side, whether it's the cast and crew or if it's the fans, we don't have to be in a rush. I'm just saying don't end the character's portrayal permanently. I'm also saying it doesn't matter who you give the mantle to. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, um, because T'Challa is there, Shuri can't be elevated. I'm not saying that at all. In the comics, yes, the mantle is passed around. That's fine. But it's always been about T'Challa. He's always still been the center, even while other people get highlighted. So I'm like, look, you can talk about other characters. You can highlight the other ones. That's fine but you don't need to get rid of T'Challa to do that. Um, And then the most important thing that I really wanted to communicate to people is that it's even more unsettling. And this might be something maybe even your listeners haven't heard, but it's it's more unsettling to take the real life tragedy of Chadwick's passing and to place that into the fictional storytelling. We already started grieving. I don't know if you saw this, but like when Chadwick passed, Kids around the world were grieving. They were like, oh my, like, they felt that, right? Everybody was feeling this. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, do we really want to double down on that 
in a fictional movie because you can't control real life. Yeah. But you can control fiction. You can control what we show. And I did a, uh, it, well, it wasn't me, but another website, actually a couple websites have done this on Twitter. They ran Twitter polls. And in these Twitter polls, they asked people, what, what are you looking forward to the most in Black Panther 2? And one of the, the, the number one thing that they said, number one thing most people are looking forward to in Black Panther 2 is how are you going to address the lack yep. of T'Challa? What are you going to do to celebrate Chadwick? That's what everybody's going to go into this movie to see. And the problem that I have is that not only some fans, but also Nate Moore, the VP, the executive of Marvel, he is tying T'Challa to Chadwick. Yep. They're making them one in the same. And I get that, right? Like, we all look at Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr. like, you're together. It's yep, one. Yep. I, I totally get that. But the thing is, and this is why, again, I try to emphasize how Chadwick felt. Chadwick didn't view view it that way. He was like, no, T'Challa is bigger than me. You know, I'm just an actor trying to fill this, uh, you know, bring this character to life. But he's bigger than me. But when we tie the character and the actor together so tight like that, whatever you do to the uh, character, you're doing to the actor mm -hmm. at that point. That's why I'm saying it's very unsettling to sit here and go out of your way in fiction where you have all these options to go and potentially kill this character for the third time. Let's yeah. keep in mind, he died and came back in the first movie. He died again in Infinity War. Why yeah. does anyone think that killing him for a third time before his story is even done, a good thing? I don't view it as a good thing, personally, mm -hmm. because his story is not done. I don't think that it leaves him with an actual legacy. Because he hasn't done it. All he's done was open up Wakanda. He fixed up, you know, Bucky and, and yeah. you know, the other CIA guy. And he gave, you know, he built a couple buildings here and there. But, like, that's it. Yeah. Like, we don't know how he's going to deal with anything. So I'm like, Tony Stark has a legacy. He literally saved the universe. Captain America, your boy. He's a war hero. You right. know, and he helped save. He led the efforts to do it. They have legacies. So... T'Challa had all the potential to get that same legacy, but if we kill him off again, you're cutting it short. And in my opinion, I think it's exploiting Chadwick's death. And I, I mean, I could only imagine, and I, I, I shudder just to think about it, what is his family going to think? Watching another funeral for this character again? Yeah. Like, that just feels weird to me. I don't even understand, and, and I, I really want to give as much respect to the cast and crew. But I don't understand as an actor why you would want to put yourself through that again, you know, because there were rumors that there's going to be like a potential funeral and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, why do you want to double down on that? Why do you want to go revisit that, you know, for the sake of storytelling? And you're doing this for money. Right. And you're doing it for money. Like, it's not a free, it's not like they're donating all the yeah. proceeds or and anything. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I'm just like, I'm not saying Marvel's doing this intentionally. I'm not saying they're doing anything malicious. I just think that they're missing the bigger implications yeah. that come along with it. And that's why I'm like, look, whatever you do, guys, you guys got time travel. You got magic. You got the multiverse. You have other options besides killing T'Challa again Yeah, for profit. You have other options. That's all. You know, you brought that up and I was like wanting to talk to some of my friends who are like, you know, I know they love Black Panther, one of them favorite films. So I was like, you know, I'll talk to you because you're kind of on the same wavelength. And sure. I, I talked to him and I was like, okay, so I know we've talked about this before, but tell me your feelings on T'Challa. And he was like, honestly, it's going to be weird watching this film. And if they do the opening funeral and there's T'Challa and they do something, maybe show, you know, show black, the Black Panther suit or something, or however they treat that, you know, passing away of T'Challa, it's going to be weird. But then he's like, but then we have to go from that directly to fish guy invading Black Panther because power struggle because the king is dead. I was like, right. I didn't even, right. I'm too stupid to think of it that way because I'm like, oh, it's a comic book movie. And then, right, then right, it right. hit me. I'm like, oh my God, you're right. Namor's going to be like this invading D bag yeah. when the king passes, and again, you're gonna push that whole 
we're not recasting him and he's gone and the actor and the funeral that's going to yeah. be such a whiplash effect and i really thought about that i was like yeah i kind of get what you're saying now and yeah. that to me again like you said it's one of those things where it, i really did have to think about it i was like yeah captain america he's got a legacy and there's all these characters with legacies and suddenly yeah. t'challa's is going to be one film extended ish cameos if you can call them that i mean just if brief that. appearances and then he's gone and suddenly you got this new you know king or new black panther whoever they're gonna give it to and they're gonna you know in the film they're gonna speak about t'challa as this great character that we've never yeah. seen really outside the first film and i'm like right. i kind of see all these arguments now and kind of start to click in my head and i, I do understand it now a little bit more on what you're saying directly and i've seen fans again on both sides and i've seen a lot more people once they start to realize what you're saying be like it does make sense and i'm still seeing people say well they made the best decision they could which again you got to respect sure. the decision they made for right sure. now but yeah imagine if it doesn't play out so well and the film isn't as well received and then you know yeah. it does have that whiplash effect of blue laser in the sky but here's the funeral you're gonna be like I don't know if right. that was done right. So, right, yeah. Right. I, now, now, look, yeah. just to give them a little credit, I think Ryan Coogler is a genius. I right? love him. Like, yeah. I, I love this guy. He's like one of my favorite directors. I don't, I, I think that they are still going to put a good product down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I still think that they're going to deliver something, you know, action packed. It's going to have the drama. I still have qualms if they were to kill off T'Challa again. Um, matter of fact, you know, on my own channel, I'm going to present um, the blip theory because this is a theory people have put out there. It's a perfect, perfectly reasonable theory. I think that would be a perfect compromise um, on both sides. And I'll just give you a quick gist of it. Basically, you know that you can make a movie take place at different times at the same time. Right. Yeah. So I'm sitting here thinking like, man, I think it is perfectly reasonable to believe that Shuri never got dusted because we never saw her get dusted. Mm -hmm. And maybe she was, you know, around during those five years before the blip, before everybody came back. And it would make sense that during that time that they would have a big funeral for T'Challa because he did get yeah. dusted away, you know? So I'm like, hey, if you do it at that point, that makes sense for the story. It gives Shuri or whoever, M'Baku, plenty of time to develop to rule Wakanda it also you know bring on the fish man yeah. you know like you can totally bring them in as well have their conflict or whatever and then you can even end the movie right there you can end it right there before um end game starts you know if you want to because we just got Black Widow and that was a prequel yeah. as well so prequels can work but my thing is that if this is going to take place after end game we literally saw T'Challa perfectly fine, hanging out with his mom and sister, you know, celebrating and everything. And to me, I'm just like, bring that in now is just going to be terrible. It's just mm -hmm. going to be like, again, because you have options. And and I'm glad that you brought up earlier the kids, because I remember um, I had seen a video of yours a long time ago, and it was... Um, it, it really touched me. It was when you dressed up as Captain America oh, yeah, and visited yeah. the kids in the yep. hospital. Dude, I I was like getting tears just listening to that because when Black Panther came out, I bought out the theater before it was like a challenge, before mm -hmm. it was a thing everybody was doing. I bought out a theater and I had the kids in my neighborhood come and see it. And these kids were coming in with their posters. They had their little, you know, T'Challa <laughs> yeah. toys and everything. And the little girls were like, oh my gosh, look at Shuri. This is awesome. Yep. And I mean, like, I, I still get choked up just thinking about it oh, because yeah. it, it's it's seeing the joy in their faces. Yeah. You know, all that emotion just to have their imaginations run wild is such a beautiful thing because these characters are created for them, really, primarily. We enjoy them as adults. Right. Yeah. But they're, usually, they're, they're originally created for kids, you know. And to me, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, oh my gosh, like when people say, and this isn't an attack against them, but I'm just saying, when people are like, hey, just wait until Marvel reboots in 10 years. Hey, don't worry. Just just give it to somebody else. I'm like, don't tell me that. Tell that to the kids. Yeah. Tell, this, tell this little six-year-old that loved dressing up as King T'Challa, you know, that 
he has to wait until he goes to high school to see his hero on screen again. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if you have kids or not, but I know for my kids, I can't take a toy, their favorite toy away and be like, it's okay, you have other toys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, kids don't work that way. You don't take their fictional superhero away and be like, it's okay, you got other people you can go look at. I don't think that's fair because you have control over this. Right. This is supposed to be an escape for us, a fantasy. We we can't control real life, but we can control these stories. And to me, I'm just like, I, I just don't think it'd be fair to, to take that away from the kids just because um, adults are having a hard time emotionally dealing mm -hmm. with it. I think we'll be fine. The kids are the ones we really should be focused on. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you, you make a point there because, like, uh, I don't talk about her a lot, but I have, like, one daughter, and my wife and I are just like, you know, we keep her out at a public spotlight, because what would be the point, yeah. right? And she's right, right, very right. much, and she's young, so, like, the whole thing with the kids, you know, again, me and you, we can have issues with certain things in the comic sure. movies and everything, but the 10, 12-year-old that has their hero on the screen perceives it differently, and I know my daughter was a huge fan of Rey from Star Wars, yeah. and I remember going to the last film, and she wanted to dress up as Rey, and there was grown men there insulting the character of Ray at the premiere. And I was just like, dude, you guys are like Terrible. 40. Come on. Like, what are Terrible. you doing? You know, and there's a bunch of kids dressed up as their favorite character. Like, there was even yeah. a boy dressed up as Ray. I was like, that's cool. And I get, you yeah. know, I see what you're saying there. You know, it is for them. And there is this next level where me and you have to think about how would we have felt back in the day? You know, like, yeah. um, you know, it's, it is that factor. And... It just makes me think that I think people need to kind of look at every angle on it instead of just the one angle and how they react to it. Because again, yeah, I can't tell you my connection to Black Panther as this white guy whose favorite character is Captain America and Aquaman because like that's you know I didn't have the same experiences as you, but you know other people can't also relate to me. So it's like that weird ground we have to kind of take everybody's reasoning and arguments and understand what they're saying and what does this character ultimately mean to everybody and as mm. you said at the beginning t'challa is more than just you know this one thing and suddenly to kind of just cut it off there it does feel a little weird and you know it's no that it's a good point because like and this is one of the things that i would say makes us different than the snyder cut right because the snyder cut was really just fans wanting to champion, you know, Zack Snyder's vision, get their movies, right? Yeah. And that's fine. I Like, I have no problem with people wanting what they want. That's fine. When it comes to T'Challa, what, what people might not know is that it's also about Black representation on screen. Um, the history of T'Challa, he was created in 1966 by Jack Kirby, right? Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, they sat there and was like, wait a minute, we have Black comic readers, but we don't have Black leading characters for them. Let's create something for them. Jack Kirby created T'Challa to be the embodiment of Black representation, and it created, it allowed T'Challa to become the very first leading Black superhero in mainstream comics. He wasn't a sidekick. He wasn't like a stereotypical shucking and jiving turkey, you know, right. jive turkey talking type of character. He was like a king. This guy had like nine PhDs. He was kicking the butt of the Fantastic Four, yeah. you know, which... For, for people that don't know, in the 60s, that was like the Justice League, yep. you know, like that was a big deal, you know. So he was like, T'Challa was like the Jackie Robinson for other black characters. He's he's almost like our Superman. The way how right. Superman is the prism for all other superheroes, that's how T'Challa is for all other black characters that come after him. He's supposed to be like a cornerstone, not a stepping stone. He's a cornerstone, a foundation, and you build around T'Challa, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's because of T'Challa's presence that when you have people like the Dora Milaje introduced that you can, you know, be ingratiated into that, right? It's because of T'Challa that when, you, that Shuri is even possible. We, You know, for the yeah. people that want Shuri elevated, it's because T'Challa was there. And guess what? When T'Challa was, when Shuri was rising and getting her power and everything, T'Challa supported her. I don't think people realize, because people think that these characters are expendable. They're not. The 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 uh, important thing with that is when you see someone like T'Challa with all that rich heritage and legacy and, and, and context, and you see him validating and, 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 and supporting and defending Shuri, 
that's the role model that you want to see, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when Captain America is standing up for people that attack Sam Wilson as, yeah. you know, the new Captain yeah. America. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. it's kind of like, like you need that there to elevate and support anything new that comes after. And not only is this about Black representation, but I also want to kind of have people understand that this is also um, a prime opportunity for another Black actor. I don't think people realize that, like, when we talk about recasting, I know some people really believe, hey, I can't see anybody else but Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. That's it. But let me ask you, do you have that same struggle when it comes to James Bond? Because I would right. argue that most people don't. No. We can rattle off people for James Bond real easy. Why? Because there's so many, I would say, white actors that have had leading roles. It's easier for us to imagine and see them in that role. We don't have the same luxury with black actors. You don't see a lot of black actors in leading roles mm -hmm. outside of Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. And that's that, that's what I would argue is like the only reason people keep pushing for Killmonger to come back or a redeemed Killmonger. I'm like, there are other talented black actors not named Michael B. Jordan. And I would say that if you find yourself struggling to figure out who could play the role, that's even more reason why you want to recast. Because a leading role in Marvel is a game changer for an actor. Robert Downey Jr. was on the downhill when he was before he was Iron Man. He was going to jail, coming back, dealing with drugs and alcohol, and mm -hmm. Iron Man saved him. No one was checking for Chris Hemsworth until he became <laughs> yeah. Thor. Tom Holland was doing backflips in his backyard. No one knew his name, but the moment he became Spider-Man, he got all these roles. He's getting all this exposure. Even if his other movies suck, it doesn't matter because he's Spider-Man. So what I'm saying is a leading role in Marvel is prime. That's gold. You don't want to throw that away, especially with the very first leading black character in the yeah. MCU, you know, who, by the way, was T'Challa. So what I'm saying is when you have like all these other popular white characters, James Bond, Joker, Spider-Man, you know, Batman, whatever, they get multiplication and addition. They get more. You don't even if you're introducing Supergirl, you don't get rid of Superman. You bring yeah. him alongside her. If you're doing something with Robin or Batgirl, Batman is still there. Bruce Wayne is still there. You know, so for me, I'm like, but with black characters, we're getting substitution and yeah. subtraction. I don't want to get rid of T'Challa to elevate Shuri. I want to elevate both of them. Yep. I don't want to, you know, say like, hey, okay, we get more M'Baku because I love Winston Duke too. Oh, yeah. But I don't want to do that at the expense yep. of getting rid of other black characters. So, when people say, but there are other black superheroes we can talk about, I'm like, yeah, let's talk about them. But I don't want to do that at the expense. It's it's taken 50 years to get T'Challa on screen. Mm -hmm. 50 years. And he's only been on screen, I would tell you this, he, by the time I think it was Endgame or Infinity War, Ant-Man had more screen time than King T'Challa. Yeah. Ant-Man. So to me, I'm like, if this is supposed to be a character that has all the potential to be on the level of Captain America and Tony Stark and, mm -hmm. and Doctor Strange, you need to give him that push and not just throw him away. And one other thing, and I'm sorry for going on. Oh, Marcus, no, that's but, fine, man. I'm um, loving this. You, you brought up the question about mantles. And I, and I love the fact that you are a Captain America fan because I think you can understand this. My argument with mantles is the fact that people don't care about mantles. We care more about the characters that define the mantles. Yeah. Right. We care about the Captain America mantle because Steve Rogers solidified it. He ba he basically made it what it is today. So that way, when anyone else takes up the mantle, you know what it's supposed to be yeah. and what it means. Right. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, when we sit here and do passing the mantle and treating, let's say if you put the mantle first and not T'Challa first then it would almost be like, imagine if you had Captain America in his first movie, but after he goes into the ice, he dies. That's it. You yeah. don't get him. Then, uh, um, you know, Winter Soldier gets it. Okay, but that's it. After that, then Sam gets it. And it's just a hot potato of whoever is, you know, Captain America. Do you think it's going to carry the same value? You know, is it really going to carry the same weight? You know, and I don't think it will because you're going to have a revolving door of mm -hmm. Captain America's. No one cares about the mantle, but we do care 
about those characters. It's just like with James Bond. You've never seen a 007 movie, ever. You've only seen James Bond movies, and he defines yeah. what it means to be 007. Right. Even when you had his last movie, and there was a woman that was 007, we still went for James Bond. Exactly, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's the character that matters, right? So to me, I'm like, look, it's about T'Challa. T'Challa is the figure, even if he doesn't have the mantle, and that's why you don't want to get rid of him. That's why recasting is so important because it continues the, his story and his legacy. And and I'm, I'm sorry to pull on people's heartstrings. It's a better testament, I think, to Chadwick Boseman. I need people to remember. I know that it might seem uncomfortable seeing a different face in that role. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be immediate. But what I would challenge people to think about is this guy was battling cancer for four years. And I don't know if you've dealt with cancer or know people who have, but like, that's no joke. That's a, your whole body is fighting against you. You are tired. You are sick. Yeah. You are not feeling good. You, But he still got up out of the bed, went to work. You uh, have interviews from the What If writers, AC Bradley yep. and the director, DC, uh, Brian Andrews. And they said he was excited to show the world more T'Challa. He wanted the world to see T'Challa, even without the mantle, still be able to save the galaxy mm -hmm. and stand side by side with Thor, Captain America, and the Hulk, and all of them. So for me, I'm like, if this guy could get up, he could have stayed in bed. He could have relaxed with his family. You know, he could have done all of that. But he busted his butt to show us, the world, how much T'Challa mattered. Because yeah. the same way you went to go visit, um, you know, those kids in the hospital, Chadwick was doing the same thing. Yep. There's an interview where he was talking about these two young boys who were literally trying to hold on. They were trying to hold on just to see the Black Panther movie. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Chadwick's response to that was like, oh, my gosh, I need to go in the gym. I got to go remember my lines. I got to work on my accent. I got to make this happen for those kids because that imagery, that representation matters. Yeah. So I'm like, if Chadwick could go bust his butt fighting cancer to show us more T'Challa, I think we can handle a little bit of uncomfortability watching someone else pick up his work. Because I think the best way to honor someone is to continue their work, not to shelve it, not to stop it. I mean, look at uh, Walt Disney. Walt yeah. Disney died before Walt Disney World was created. They didn't just say stop production. Yeah. You know, no, they continued. They built it because that was his vision. That was what he was working towards. So I'm like, yo, Chadwick wanted us to see more T'Challa. Let's keep that going. Let's make him the beginning of a legacy and not the end of one. Yeah. I want him to be our Christopher Reeve right. for Superman. Let, let him be the first one and we can get more. And, you know, that is something you very much bring up that I think is valid. And I've heard so many people bring up the James Bond thing. I'm like, but the James Bond thing, you know, depending on who you grew up with, that's your bond. Yeah. But you can move on and you just accept it. And exactly what you said about the whole, you know, passing the mantle and everything, that very much I agree with all of that. And how they've handled it with other characters and kind of what we have now and how we look at it, for example, you know, from the outside and how they're handling it. And with the whole T'Challa thing, to me, I look at this whole thing and I'm like, who he is and kind of bringing more of that. Like you said, if they were to cast somebody else as mm -hmm. T'Challa, suddenly another actor, another black actor gets to the top of Hollywood and becomes the name. And that yeah. kind of, to me, is really what I think when you started talking about it really stuck out to me because I, I do think we need that. It's like, mm -hmm. well, look, yeah, we have another great black actor that's in Doctor Strange yeah. and I love Baron Mordo one of my absolute favorite Marvel Comics characters but he's still a villain and he doesn't have that type of grasp on the fan base you know yeah and sure they could go oh in the multiverse he's a Sorcerer Supreme and he's good he's still a supporting role it's not yeah. T'Challa and uh, you know I I'm just trying to put myself in the mindset of where you're at and I'm definitely mm. agreeing with you there I think everything you've said does largely makes sense. And I think people listening to this, especially are going to go, yeah, okay, I see what he's saying, you know? And again, to bring it back to the beginning, you're not going about mm -hmm. this in a toxic way. You're not going about this in a meet our demands or we're going to boycott your movie type no. of deal because 
you're better than that because you understand, hey, there's still going to be people that love this movie character that, you know, that world is going to be comfortable to them because of what the first one did. And yeah. that is one of those things where I've seen people bring this up as an argument going, well, mm -hmm. maybe he's not in Black Panther 2 and they're going to say this or that. And then he shows up in Black Panther 3. Mm -hmm. Okay. If they recast him for Black Panther 3, however they do it, multiverse or whatever. I still feel it would be a little weird to have a sequel without him, you know? Like, it is that whole thing. Like, yeah. you have to address his whereabouts, and you can't yeah. just ignore them. So yeah. I always get into that kind of mindset of, this is going to be a tough scenario, however they handle it. Yeah. There's going to be all sorts of conflicting, you know, much like there is now. And this still hasn't hit the public eye. You know, when they see the first right. trailer and they go, they didn't recast him. Right, you know, right. <laughs> eyes are going to be on you right. for starting this, and you're going to be sure. way back in this other circle, you know, redoing the same thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, and that, that see now that's why I said if you want to make this narrative work, just do it before the blip. You had five yeah. years where there was no T'Challa. That will make sense. No, and listen. I, I also want to make people understand this is if they were to recast, like let's just say later, even if they do a variant, whatever. If you see a new face there, I need people to stop pretending as though, like, we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Even if you're the most casual moviegoer, most people know what happened to the lead actor. This isn't going to be some crazy abrupt change, you know, like a uh, roadie, you know, yeah. in the yeah. Iron Man thing. Like, we didn't, we had no clue. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Out of nowhere, they just yeah. changed them. We were like, wait a minute, what, what just happened here? You know, like, it's not going to be like that. Of course, there's going to be trailers. There's going to be news articles. Like, if they finally get somebody, we will have advance notice. We'll get used to it. But not only that, we already have the background information. Yeah. Most people will know if they get a replacement, it's because the actor died. It's not going to yeah. be a shock. It's not going to be crazy. You know, like, we'll get it and we'll be all right. Yeah, it's, I, I know. And like, you, you know, you say that makes a good point to me because I've only had my mom who doesn't like science fiction or anything, you know, and my dad is yeah. a huge fan of it. I knew she knew what was going on when she called me about 30 minutes after Chadwick Boseman news hit. She was like, did you see that the Black Panther actor died? Because right. she's seen one comic book film and it's Black Panther. Right. And she loved right. it. And she was like, I absolutely love this film. I was like, I never thought you'd see a comic book movie, but Black Panther to her was like, well, my friends at work are talking about it. I'm going to go see yeah. it. So I do agree with that. It wouldn't suddenly be like a blind side. We go watch, you know, Black Panther 2 work. Like, they recast them. And, right. you know, I agree with you. They could have used that as an opportunity to kind of make people be like, look, this is what we had to do. And I've seen people bring up the whole, but Heath Ledger. And I look on that and I'm like, well, they did want to recast him actually multiple yeah. times, but Chris, you know, it was Chris Nolan that was like, I'm not even going to do anything that I originally wanted, delay the film yeah. and I'm going to write a completely different script because he didn't want anything, but they were mm -hmm. going to do it. And they did recast the Joker twice since that, three, four times if you consider the TV series. Yeah. And I know people are going to say, well, that's a different universe. Yes, but to the point of, all those other Jokers, especially Joker, was a huge success, and people still love the character. So yeah. it is, like you say, going to be weird going into a T'Challa-less Black Panther sequel in future where you're like, accept it. And you're just like, but right. it, it's, yeah. And, I, and that's the thing, like, you know, I told you from the jump, I'm a Black Panther fan, right? Like, I'm a Marvel fan. I want these things to succeed. I mm -hmm. want them to make two billion dollars right. in the box office you know what i'm saying and and for me my concern when i say recast again i'm a film critic i've been doing this for many years i study how films work one thing i've never seen is a follow-up to a blockbuster movie being successful without its main character i've never seen the emphasis of a and, and again please anyone in the comments please correct me if i'm wrong if you can point to me to a franchise where the sequel elevated the supporting characters and did world building and that was a success, I will stand totally corrected. All I'm saying is when you switch out the main characters, when you, because to me, look, world building, supporting characters, that's a platform for Disney Plus series, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what something I had said from the very beginning that they should have done. I'm like, yo, you could have delayed Black Panther 2. 
you could have done a Disney Plus series instead because they already greenlit oh, yeah. uh, Ryan Coogler to do Wakanda series and stuff. And I'm like, that would be a perfect time to build Shuri up, you know, to have audiences get to know her more, kind of like how we did with Sam Wilson. We had a whole series to get to know him. He got his mantle. He got his title. And then now he has his new movie coming up. And I'm like, why can't we do the same thing, you know, with that? And I was saying this back in like April before production even started, mm -hmm. before they started rewriting the scripts and stuff. So, you know, um, and, and I know your listeners might <laughs> bring this up. So I do have to address this. A lot of times people will say, but Marvel's already shot things. They're in production. Everything you're saying is too late. Let me just remind people that Marvel can do whatever they want. They have a track record of yeah. doing whatever's necessary if they want to do so. For example, um, they changed the story of the Hulk in the uh, uh, Age of Ultron based off of a rumor that uh, Marvel was going yep. to do a standalone movie for them. This is yeah. documented. I'm not making this up. You guys can look it up. They changed the entire story of the Hulk based off of just chatter yep. online. Yep. Um, WandaVision. They changed at the last minute. That's at, in post-production. They took Doctor Strange out of the story because they didn't want him to take over and overshadow and Wanda. Uh, uh, Spider-Man, No Way Home. <laughs> a whole pandemic hit, you know, unexpected situation. Yeah. Maybe like a passing too. They changed the entire plot of Spider-Man and they moved it up ahead of Doctor Strange 2. Right. In mid-production. And they changed the entire ending doing. of Doctor Strange as well, because we're now seeing the connection. Yes. And also, Doctor Strange just finished eight weeks' worth of reshoots. Exactly. So, yeah, and I, yeah. don't even forget, they moved their entire slate yeah. of 2022 movies because of, again, unexpected situation with Letitia Wright being injured. They yeah. pushed everything back. So what I'm telling people is, like, please do not go around believing that Marvel is so handicapped that they yeah. can't... Ch Black Panther itself, the second one, has already gone under at least five script revisions. Mm -hmm. At least. And it's, again, while it's in production. Yeah. So it, it's it's not nearly impossible, as some people would say, that Marvel could change their minds or do alterations to make these things work. Yeah. So whatever we do end up seeing on screen, it's going to be because of a choice, not because of any limitations. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought up um, the point earlier, the whole point of the recast the Chala thing, it's, it's not like a do this or else, right? Like that's not what this is. It's more of like, here's a precautionary warning of yeah. a criticism that might happen if you don't recast. Yep. You're not. You're going to stifle his legacy. Um, I think that there's a valid criticism to say that even if it's unintentional, you are exploiting Chadwick Boseman's death if you do that. Um, and, and, and like it's it's taking something away from the kids. So it's it's a pre-criticism. Yeah. It's not like a, a a threat. It's not a you know like we're not <laughs> sending them you know blackmail letters or anything in the mail. You know, we're just saying, like, hey, if you do go this one route, even though you got a million other routes to take, this is what you're going to have to deal with. And I will be one of those people, you know, pressing them on these questions. I yeah. will say, why did you find it necessary to, put, again, potentially, because we don't know what's going to happen. Why did you find it necessary to kill this character off? Why did you find it necessary to elevate Shuri, but you had to get rid of the character? Yeah. Why did you find it necessary to do this and it? Like... I need them to explain themselves at that point. I yeah. don't have to do that. Right. You know, if, they, if they don't cast, that's not on me. That's on them. Because now with this being fiction and you having all these avenues to take, you ha the onus is on them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, no I, I agree with all of that. And you brought up something which I constantly see people bring up. It's like, but they have a set slate. They have a production schedule. They have this. I'm like, tell that to the Inhumans. You know, my, my absolute favorite comic book team is the Inhumans. You know, I got all the Black original Bolt. issues. Like, yeah, I love yeah. Black Bolt. Like, and that was scrapped entirely. And, you know, what happened with that? And there's all these things. And people are like, well, what else could they drop? I'm like, uh, 
my one of my favorite like top three comic book films of all time is Blade Two. Oh, love it. Where's yes. my Blade reboot? If yes. you can easily swap in because Blade's going to be cheaper and it's a more darker, grittier thing. I'm like, yeah. you can push back Black Panther and do the proper thing and give it a little more time and, you know, take yeah. your time and swap things out and give us more of this other content that we know you're working on. It's not yeah. like they're lacking content because th- last year alone, we had more hours of MCU content than the entire two and a half phases before it. So, like, Facts. Yeah. there's so much content and it is one of those things where people will bring up an argument, but ultimately they will be questioned on this. And I can only imagine yeah. how this situation is going to be and how careful they have to be when that first trailer drops and the interview hits. Because, yes. uh, you know, we scrutinize and we read through every single little quote being like, yeah. is this a clue? Is this a hint? What's right, their right. intent? This thing, everything we do now isn't even a fraction of how we're going to look at what they're saying there. And one person's going to go, but that person at Disney said, financially, this is what we have to do. And the blowback's going to start. And I am, you know, it's, you just know it's coming and it's going to be oh, yeah. something very interesting with the marketing and, you know, and we saw Fast and Furious, for example, because I have to bring that up because somebody's going to yeah. bring it up in the comments because they always do when we talk about Black Panther. They still didn't just say, Brian's done. He, we re- right. They did actively get his brother and they shot those scenes and they had that scene at the end and he goes off and was somewhere and people have been saying maybe they should have recast. And now it looks like actually in in the upcoming sequels, that actually seems to be a factor because they're like, we realize, you know, so Mm -hmm. again, you know, I'm seeing everything you've said, you know, we've been here for like 50 minutes talking about this now. And I find it hard to disagree with you on all the points you made because like, you make valid points and i personally know people that are going to be like oh wait because they have no idea that they're not recasting it, it is just going to be a whole situation that's going to it, it's going to really get into the public spotlight more than anything now and even now yeah. it's a thing you know so it's yeah but i mean uh, listen this is why i'm going on my crusade right like this is why i'm i'm making videos about it this is why i'm doing interviews i'm i'm trying to write articles about it i mean um, and shout out, by the way, to the LA Times. The LA Times did a fantastic uh, write up on what Recast T'Challa is all about. Um, because I know for a lot of people, um, they might only look at the hashtag mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Like they don't know what it's about. They don't know, you know, hopefully they've listened to all 50 minutes of this or what, you know, how far we've gotten with this. But, um, you know, when the people just react to it and they don't know more about it, uh, it's easier to stay in the dark, you know, Mm -hmm. and just kind of, you know, remain with whatever they feel. And this is why, again, I don't, you know, I totally understand people's feelings about this stuff. You know, I really do because I'm in the trenches with you. You know, I'm, I'm a fan too. Like I, I grieve, I mourn, I, I celebrate, I yell and scream whenever these, you know, Captain America's grabbing his hammer, you know, like I'm (laughs) there, I'm there too, you know? Um, but at the same time, like for me, I'm also looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. Like I said, I want this to succeed. I, I I don't nerd out on this stuff because it's boring. It's because I love it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I want the best for it. I want the best for the fans. I want the best for the cast and crew. Um, I want the best for the kids that are watching. I want, I want everyone to win, you know? And I think yeah. that the best way to do that is to not paint ourselves in a corner. I, I think Marvel needs to not paint themselves in a corner, leave the doors open, yeah. leave some options out there. I don't care if it's a post credit scene, uh, if they want to just throw in a little quick timestamp, you know, in the movie. Like, there are a lot of different things they could do. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I want this to be a positive thing for everybody one way or another. Yeah. No, it, I 100% support you there, especially on the positive thing and having the chatter about it. Like you said, you know, there's been a couple of great pieces that I've seen that you share. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go check this out. And you get into it. And I think a lot of people miss the, um, and, and this is no surprise. People gravitate to the headline yeah. or if it's a review, they go to the score. They right. miss everything in the middle of why you gave it what you did. And most of it can be appraised, but they'll be like, oh, but the score is an eight out of 10. So who cares? Right. <laughs> right. And right. I hate that. And as somebody who used to grow up reading magazines, so like, you know, oh, electronic gaming monthly it was all about the read and then you get to the bottom and yep. i get what you're saying there because people will see the headline or recast the chala and they have a reaction but they don't know the push behind it yeah. so i guess to kind of um you know 
wrap this up, I want to ask you, when people sure. go to your channel and check it out, when they go follow you on Twitter, when they look mm-hmm. at everywhere that this is kind of um, you know, a thing that's obviously going to, as soon as that first trailer drops, you're going to be right yeah. there front and center as somebody that gets highlighted. Be like, oh, the trailer is here. Check, the, check out this, right. right? What would you say to those people? Because I know most of the people listening to this are going to totally agree with everything you're saying be like he makes a good point there's gonna be a couple people that are like uh what do you <laughs> want to tell them like what is like kind of your ending statement on this and the push forward and your goal for this ultimately sure sure look i i would say this um don't judge the hashtag go read the petition change.org backslash recast t'challa i've listed everything basically summed up right there in that petition Um, And I'll just reiterate the very easy points, right? We're not asking for an immediate recast. It's, we're just saying, leave the door open. We're not saying other people can't get the mantle. If you want to elevate Shuri, M'Baku, whoever, that's fine. Um, We're asking Marvel not to exploit the death of Chadwick Boseman as a plot device in their fictional storytelling. Um, And we're just asking to continue the portrayal of T'Challa that's all we're saying. That that that's literally it. And and I know some they're they're even more hardcore people than I am. Some people are like, no, recast right now. Uh, uh forget Shuri. Right. Do the, listen, I get that passion and I totally understand. But I'm making the bar as low as possible so that way it can be a a a, a reasonable compromise for everyone on board. Like every side, if you're still grief stricken on Chadwick, you can see what we're talking about. If you're on the cast and crew, we're giving you an out by saying, just leave this open, you know? So wherever, and if you're a diehard Black Panther fan, we're saying, we just want to continue the portrayal. So if you're going to judge anything, you don't have to go watch my interviews. You don't have to go read all my tweets or watch all my very long videos (laughs) explaining this stuff. Just read the petition, read the petition, and judge that. Don't judge the hashtag. Read the petition. Change.org backslash recast T'Challa. Um, and, and I think at that point, um, it's more than reasonable that more people should agree with it than not. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, you've literally, you know, you've made your point right now. I find it hard to disagree with anything you've said because you come from it from a place of passion and care and not malicious about it at all and you know asking for just respect and people to look at this and kind of make up their own mind and hear your side of the argument and you just spent a good hour of it actually stating what it is and kind of you know asking fans to just talk at it and i hope they go and really look into what you're saying as i have and kind of what the message is and ultimately why you feel this way and if they want you know share this podcast go to your channel share your videos because i've seen them again and you know you make some great points on there because it is something that's larger than just, as you said, than what's being presented. And, you know, I hope that people truly are listening and kind of can understand what you said here and that you honestly continue to do this because, you know, we need more of this type of a fan dedication and also the love for the character being front and center and, you know, kind of a bringing your own opinion into it again, in a non-toxic way, which I think is important yeah. as always, that should be something that's very important. So, you know, um, again, thank you for joining me here for the podcast. We've been trying to work this out for a while and I'm glad I could finally get you on. And, uh, um, oh, thank you. Hey, I really appreciate you giving me this time to, you know, just kind of clear the air, make sure that everybody understands at least my perspective. Yeah. It, it, it's okay. If you still disagree, you know, whoever's listening, that's totally fine. Um, but I just don't want anyone you know, like you said, trying to label us as toxic or anything yeah. like that. Like, don't listen to two or three people on Twitter or online talking about recap. Look at the petition. Yeah. Hold us accountable to what's in the petition, and we can go from there. Thank you so much for the time, man. No, thank you very much for joining me, and hopefully everybody enjoyed this.